friends out there in YouTube land. How's everybody today? I am Teresa Louise and today I'm going to do a art collage quilt and um, yeah we had a few people ask me if I would do this with them and so here we go. <laughs> this will be fun. So I hope I hope those of you that wanted to do this um, got your pattern already and yeah, if you haven't gotten the pattern yet, let me show you what it looks like. This is Summer Breeze. And I got this off of Amazon. It was around $17 or so. And I put that link in the description box here. And I'm going to pin it to the top. So it'll stay up there. It'll be in blue up on the top of the chat. So if you're interested, now this is not an affiliated link whatsoever. I don't, you know, I don't make anything <laughs> off of this. It's just there for you for your convenience. Okay. So yeah, I have been wanting to make this pattern for a while. I'm planning on making it for somebody. So I thought, yeah, why not? I will do it online. So let's see who we have here. Um, hello, Lori. Hello, hello. How's it going? Hi, Joyce. Hello, Louise. Uh, we have Linda Denton. Hello, hello. We have Nancy and we have Brenda. Hello, ladies. Um, Donna Bogart, hello. We have Liz here. Hi, Liz. We have Joyce, so Terry. Lisa Waterman, hello. Hello. We have Tiffany. I'm working and just listening. Okay, Tiff. Thanks for popping in. Um, hi, Janine. How are you doing? Hello, Mel. Hi, Day. Um, hello, Donna H. Hello, Donna. Handmade by Ying. Thank you. Lurking today. That's good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hi, Amy. Hi, Misty. Um, we have Shirley. We have Sally. Hello. Hello. Okay. I think I'm all cut out. Oh, there's um, KD. Hello. Almost... Hey, my screen just went black. What the heck? It's back. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Technology, isn't it so much fun? Okay, Sally, so Terry. The pattern is gorgeous. I love the patiques. Me too. Hi, Brenda. Um, mine looks good. Good. Na Thank you, Nancy. Hello, Lisa, the awkward quilter. Hope everybody is doing well. So if you're just popping in, um, hi, Jeannie. Hi, Valerie and Andrea. Okay, so this is the pattern today. If you're interested in getting it, it's over on Amazon and the link is pinned to the top of the chat. Like I said, um, I'm not a, I don't have an affiliated link. I'm not getting anything off of this, but um, that's just for your convenience. I also saw this pattern over on Etsy. You can get it for a few dollars cheaper, but I don't know. I'm not sure if that includes um, shipping or not. So, okay, I'm going to just wait a few more minutes before we get started. Um, make sure we got some people here because I'm pretty sure um, Jamie was going to do this pattern. Hello, Lynn. I haven't even started the pony yet. <laughs> I haven't started it. But yeah, I think it's going to be really pretty. I'm really excited about doing this. 
Okay, I'm working on a t-shirt quilt while I listen. Oh, how much fun. <laughs> I have to say that that is not on my to-do list. <laughs> well, for one thing, I don't have any t-shirts to do that, you know. Maybe sweatshirts. Do a sweatshirt quilt. That might be kind of cute. <laughs> it actually warmed up here today. It's, well, warm. Let's see. It's 35, 36 outside right now. We haven't gotten any new snow. Um, it was actually warmer yesterday, and the driveway got really slushy. So went out there and did a little more plowing, which is extremely hard on me. So not, I'm not feeling 100% today. So guys, just um, hang, hang in there with me. I'll do my best, okay? So hi, Paula. Hi, Polly. Hello, Mona. Yeah, I, okay, I'm a bit early, yes, for a couple of different reasons. Um, they're having a bingo <laughs> in town today, and it starts right at 3 o'clock. And uh, I was thinking about going to that. So if I'm up to it, I'm going to go to bingo. So that's why I started early today, so I could get off of here a little bit earlier. Um, because I love playing bingo. <laughs> I always have. Ever since, you know, I was a kid. <laughs> it's not just since I've gotten, you know, over 60. So, okay. It's warmer in Brooklyn, too, but still freezing. Yeah, it's still, it froze back up a bit this morning. Um, let's see. Linda says, you should go. I love bingo also. Yeah, I'm not sure what the prizes are. <laughs> I like playing bingo, though. It's cloudy in southeast Texas. Looks like we have some bingo players out there. Hi, Katie. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since I played bingo. Okay, so what you're going to need for this project is um, the pattern. <laughs> okay, so here's all the, that's just the picture. And it comes with all of these uh, instructions and templates. And then you get it on a big paper also. That's how big the the project will be, you know, it's a nice wall hanging size. It is 25 by 27. Okay, so this, you're not going to cut that up. That is, you're always going to have that, okay? <laughs> so don't cut on that one. They give you other template pieces and these are the ones that you're going to cut and um, use with your fabric. First thing you really want to do is read your instructions, okay? And I've already done that <laughs> and I've made these a couple of times so I kind of know what I'm doing, hopefully. <laughs> I might stumble here and there, so, but you read your instructions. Um, then the other thing you're going to need is a pair of paper, paper scissors. You need paper scissors, not, do not use your fabric scissors <laughs> on paper, okay? Because they'll, it'll make them dull too fast, but I do have a pair of fabric scissors in case I need them, okay? So if you see me start to use these on my paper, um, scream out loud, all right? <laughs> all right. The other thing, I have some blue tape in case I need that. I have a cup of tea. You're going to need something to drink. I also have a glass of water with some lemon in it, a lemon wedge. That's really good. Also, go ahead and grab some pens just in case you need them. You might. 
all right the other thing that i use is um, parchment paper okay this is reynolds kitchen parchment paper okay um, the reason i use this is because you can iron on it it's um heat you know resistant right up to like 500 degrees or something like that um so part now you don't have to use the parchment paper if you don't want to but um i like to use it so there you go then you're going to need an iron now i'm going to use this little iron here this is a clover iron and um the thing I like about this clover iron is that it has um, low, medium, and high, okay? Then it also has this little cage around the burner. And oh, now they do have these without this cage on it. And, you know, um, you could burn yourself because that whole bar in there gets hot. So I really recommend that if you get one of these, get it with the cage on there, okay? And then it has a little clicker that goes up for off and on, all right? So <clears throat> let's see. And I also have a ruler over here. I doubt that I'm going to need the ruler, but um, I have it here just in case, so. Um, hi, Jamie. Glad you made it. Hi, Lily. Hi, Maureen. Hello, hello, everybody. Okay. Now, the other thing you're going to get in your um, kit, your pattern, is this color swashes. These are the colors that they used um, in, in their pattern. Okay. Now, you don't have to use the same colors. Um, I have seen these patterns done up at quilt stores and they'll cut the fabric for you and get the kit all together. But this pattern was actually done in 2015. So I don't know if you can still get a kit at your quilt shop or not. You could check and see if you want to do it exactly um, like, like this is done. Um, the other thing you can do is... If you like solids, you can just match up your solids to these colors. Um, that would be one way to do it. Or you can use regular fabric and just try to match up real close. I'm going to use batiks. So I just went through and um, picked out colors that were pretty close, you know. Um, but you could go a totally different way you if you don't like purple go ahead and make him blue or teal or maybe you want it all browns you could do that just make sure that you pull different shades so then you would be matching the shades and not you know not necessarily the color but the lightness and the darks you got to have the lights and darks and mediums in there to get it so it's going to look like a horse Okay, that's really important. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Diane. Okay, um, so the other thing, and maybe my moderators can help me with this. If, there's, if you have a question, um, I know that a lot of people don't know how to tag. <laughs> um, so if you don't, and that's okay. If you have a question, you want me to see your comment, Put a heart in there first, and then your comment, and then that way I can see it easier, okay? That would be awesome. Hi, Glenda. All right, so. Um, also, I just wanted to say that if you are brand new to collage quilting or collage art, you know, it has different names, um, I recommend that you get a pattern like this to start out with, maybe even a couple, just to get you used to doing it. 
um, rather than just, you know, draw drawing something out yourself and then trying to figure it out. Um, unless you're very artistic and you're able to do that, you know, that's great. <laughs> but if not, um, if you if you started doing art collage and you know you picked your own pattern and you struggled, then and you just set it aside because it wasn't any fun, I would go get yourself one of these patterns. And this um, Tony Whitney has a lot of patterns out there, you know, um, not just this horse. So I think I saw like a, a giraffe. I think, I think he has a zebra. You know, there's all kinds of different patterns out there. Um, the other thing, too, is if you're just starting out and you don't, you know, want to do an animal, then um, freestyle landscapes are probably the easiest thing to do to start out with. Okay. But um, so, yeah, I just recommend that you get a pattern. So, like, freestyle, like, um, I got these. This was a pattern in a book. But it didn't, the book doesn't really tell you what colors to pick. Um, so I just picked my own colors. And so this would be kind of like a freestyle thing. And then I also did this teacup. I think that one, the teacup turned out really pretty. So just start out small with little things and, and you get used to. And there's another teacup. Get used to cutting out your fabric. Now, this technique is a little bit different than what we will be doing today. All right, let me move those aside. All right. Whew. All right, a little break. <laughs> Hi, Linda, how you doing? Okay, let me look and see if I have any. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, let me see if there's any questions. Oh, wow. Hi, Sheila. Um, yeah, I saw the um, Telemuk ice cream was on sale. I got the, hmm, what did I get? Oh, it's like a caramel <laughs> with little crunchies in it. Um... Okay. Thank you for the thumbs up reminder. I appreciate that. <clears throat> okay. I don't see any questions. So if I missed your question, go ahead and put it in again now. So yes, Brenda, thank you. <laughs> the Heath bar. <laughs> Those are so good. That ice cream is so good. That's like my favorite. And then I put like chocolate syrup over the top of it. <laughs> oh, yes, Andrea. Hi, I'm not sure if I said hello to you yet, Andrea. Uh, color books are great for doing this. Absolutely. And I do have a lot of color books. So, <clears throat> all right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pick out your fabric. Now, was it? last Sunday or the Sunday before, oh, it was a couple of weeks ago. I, I went through and picked out fabric. So <clears throat> if you wanna see me picking out fabric in more detail, you might wanna go back and watch that um, video. That was a couple of Sundays ago. Um, so, but I am gonna show you my fabric. In, um, how I organize my fabric. First of all, you got your color swatches right, and then you have it has them numbered one, two, all the way to 12. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to number the fabric that I have picked out. Now, this is really important um, because you don't want everything to get all mixed up, right? So I'm going to get out all my purples 
first. So I, oh, in my supplies, I have a little post-it notes and I am going to write the number on that post-it note. Okay, so I needed a, a super dark purple. So that's gonna be my darkest color, okay? So that is number 12. And this is where those uh, your pins come in handy. So I'm just gonna write number 12 on here. Like so, number 12. And then I'm going to pin it on there because um, that sticky stuff doesn't stay very long. But you could use clips if you wanted to. Okay, so number 12. That's that one. And then number 11 is a little lighter. So this is the next one, a little lighter. So that will be number 11. Now, I have not ironed these, and um, all of my fabrics today will be batiks, <clears throat> and um, I should have ironed them first, but I forgot. <laughs> okay, so number 11. And pin it. And I probably could have this part done too, but all right. So I'm just kind of hold it back up a little bit. And see, this has a lot of different colors in it. It's got brown and purples and a little bit of blue tint to it. So I thought that would work really good in the main. Okay. So the next light color is this purple. This one's pretty bright, but it's fairly close. That's what I have so far. And they're definitely not the fabrics, you know, that um, they recommend, but they are the same kind of colors, kind of shades. So I went really dark, medium dark, medium. Okay, so that one is number 10. All right, so just go ahead and keep going and marking all your colors. Did I, I found this one. I don't think I showed you guys this one, but I found this one the other day. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And I'm going to, let's see. I want to use this one. <laughs> so it's going to be kind of like, for the highlights. On the horse. I think number six. Okay. Got that figured out. Okay. So I'm not going to use this purple. I had this one and this one for just in case. So I'm not going to use either one of those. Or was that one? Hold on. No, I think I might save that one for in the horse's uh, face. That other one can go. All right. Let's see. Drooling over all those colors. <laughs> yeah, Telemuk is really good. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Susan. How's it going? Uh, let me look and see if we have any um, questions yet. Mm 
And they make good cheese too. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, Sylvia. The this shirt that's actually like a fish, you know, an ocean fish. <laughs> I I really like this uh, sweatshirt, even though I cut it up. I can't, you know, have that thing on my neck that drives me crazy. So I always cut those off. <laughs> Hi, Patty. How are you? Oh, my freezer paper doesn't ever have grid marks on it. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen freezer paper with grid marks. Okay, Maureen. She said back in a minute. Okay. I don't see any questions there. Sheila says, I cut my sweatshirt next to you. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, oh, yeah, lionfish. Thank you, Lori. I was trying to figure out what you said there. Okay, so back to numbers on here. All right, so that is, I have 12, 11, 10, I think this one, nine. Let's see where nine is going to be. Sometimes I kind of like to look and see where on where the, that number is going to be. Okay, it's some of the hair, looks like. Nine, 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 nine. Doesn't look like it's used very much. Just trying to see all the spots that this is used at. Eight. Okay. Like nine has oranges. So I'm gonna, I got this one for some orange. So, what are you guys working on today? And um, who? 
who is doing this pattern? Hi, Jane. Hi, Billy. <clears throat> yeah, my uh, parchment paper has grids on it. Okay, so number nine and seven. I'm going to use this for seven. Number seven and number six. Six is kind of like a marbled colors and that's where I'm going to use this. <clears throat> Oh no, it's easy. You could do it. You just got to be a little organized, you know. It'll help, um, helps to stay just a little organized. And I'm probably being a little more organized uh, right now because you all are watching. <laughs> right? I want to give you good habits. <laughs> okay, so five is more of a, a little more orange in it too. So it's more orange, orange and purples, you guys. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do this one as number five. Okay, and number four. Now we're getting into some of the lights. I think on the face. Let me see where some of these fours are going to be. We have six, seven, eight in the horse's face. Six. I don't think I marked eight right. Okay, we have ten, nine, it was eight. Marked it wrong. Okay. There, it's fixed. <laughs> okay. Susan is working on block six of the pressed flower. Oh, wow. You're, you're really going, aren't you? Yeah, soup does sound good. I'm putting binding on a table runner from Missouri Star Christmas block box. Cool. It's 
Oh, it's your husband's birthday. Happy birthday. Hi, Sarah. At least several whips. How many are several, Billy? <laughs> Uh, made a log cabin cushion with Liberty Fabrics today for a gift. Just need to bind it tomorrow. Awesome, Lynn. That sounds good. Hi, Karen. Okay. You're trying to catch up to me? <laughs> I still got to do number nine. Okay. Yeah. I hope you have a happy, happy birthday with your hubby, hubby, hubby. What's interesting is because they use batiks too. And the um, batiks have so many different shadings in them that sometimes it looks like they've actually used two different pieces of fabrics. So that's kind of what I like about batiks. You look at the picture and on your batik, you decide where you want to cut that out at. So you might be able to get a little more light in the light area or darker in the dark areas. Okay. So... One is my lightest color. So I'll do that. Number one, that's pretty much in the face of the horse. And two is a little darker. This is my number two. Or this is, let's see. I'll do, I'll do this one as number two. And there's not much difference in between these, these three, but they're, they are different. They're shaded a little bit differently. Okay, so that's number two. This will be number three. One thing about it, um, the way I do this, it's not really permanent. So if I want, if I cut it out and put it up on the pattern and I don't like the way it looks, I can pick a different color and cut it out again. So I, um, I don't really waste my templates that way. Let's see, this is number three. And number four. Okay, I might do this one for number four because it has some light and darks in it. So I can pick, you know. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. And okay, so four. I got five. Uh, I'll show you all these in just a second. Six. Let me see what six is. Okay, uh, I think I got them all. Not sure about this one, number nine. Let's see where number nine is. Oh, I talked about this one again already. Yeah, it's kind of light, actually. Doesn't look like that light on here, though. <clears throat> All right, I'll keep this one. <clears throat> and we'll see. Okay, nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Okay, and I still have some other fabrics here for just in case um, I end up having something that I don't really like. Uh, this is the only one fabric that's actually a cotton. It's um, not a batik, it's hand dyed. You see how many colors you could get off of there? Or shades if you needed something really bright or darker or you could even cut out in this spot right here so there's quite a few different colors and shades to choose from okay so here are my colors That's uh, what I'm going to use to start out with. And I'm going to start, I'm just going to go ahead and start with one, which is in the face. So that'll kind of be in the middle of the project. Okay. And I, oh, I, I also have this piece too <laughs> for extra. Okay. Now. get these laid out here also I wanted to show you um, I do a lot of my collages on a board like this this is a double clipboard um, you get them in like the um, supply art supplies and so I could actually what you want to do though is put a piece of batting on here and then you can put your pattern on here. Like so. And then you can take it with you downstairs <laughs> while you're watching TV. <laughs> so I do that a lot. So I could just take it with me, right? These, uh, this clipboard is pretty handy, and as you can see, it's had some use. <laughs> it also has a handle right here.
All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera this way so I can sit down for this next part. So I'm going to move some of my stuff. Move this, this. That can stay right there. That goes over there. Um, I'm going to need this. Goes to the iron. Okay. Need my some scissors. I'll get my tea. <laughs> I gotta move everything over there. My tape, I'm gonna need that. And my pencil. Okay. Hi Pat. How's it going? I haven't seen you in a while. All right. I'll go ahead and plug my iron in. And get that turned on. Okay. I'm going to pick up the camera and move it. So hold on, you guys. I should have just started over here to begin with. Okay. Oh, I got Berry Licious done. Here's Berry Licious. I haven't put any extra borders on it yet, so that's very licious. That's the one that Susan and I were doing. Okay, I gotta sit down. Oh, good to see you too, Linda Dollar. How are you? All right, move this out of the way. Now I'm gonna, in just a minute, point the camera down. For you and okay any questions Ugh. oh my back is getting sore standing up that long my feet started to go numb <laughs> thank you No, um, no, it's not the strawberry cult. It's the berry licious. Um, let me go get the pattern. Ow, if I can find it. really pretty though and I picked out um, this is the pattern um, Jolly Bar from the Fat Quarter Shop Berry Basket Collection that's the fabric collection and it's the quilt is called Berry Licious and right now it's 64 and a half square and um, I have this fabric to go with it. And I think I think this might be the binding. So I might put like a white border around it and then just put this on as the binding. I haven't totally decided yet, but isn't that pretty? <laughs> That's not gonna stay up there. <laughs> I'm just gonna fall any minute. It'll fall. Thank you. I love it too. It turned out really pretty. Now, um, Susan did hers quite a bit bigger. I'm not sure what it turned out to be. Thank you, Valerie. Okay. Little sip. Hi, Jean. How are you doing? Okay, so I decided that I'm going to use 
number one fabric first. So what I do is I take, these are the templates and they say that you can cut them out, but that's not how I do it. Okay, the other thing to make sure is kind of confusing because, okay, for instance, H1, two, and H is um, hair, <laughs> okay? So it tells you in your instructions what the meanings are, what, you know, they have H, um, M, and so I can get a little confusing. Okay, so for instance, fabric number 10, it's a purple violet. It's used on the horse and in the mane. It's on the forelock, the ear, and the eye. And so it's going to have like M3, M4, M6, M9, M11, M14. So, but it also has F8, F9, F14, E2, okay, so, so it'll give you the pattern key, um, background, and then e, M is for the main, H is for the horse, E is for the ear, N is for the neck, F is for the forelock, and E, Y is for the I, okay? Um, and I'm not putting this on background fabric yet. So, Fabric number one is actually the background fabric, but it's also used on the horse, um, H2, two pieces. So it goes right down the middle. But I'm just going to use it on the horse. It's not actually going to be my background fabric. <laughs> so there's that. It looks just like yours, Susan. They're both pretty. All right, so it won't be very much of this one. So H2 is pretty easy, but when you start looking at some of these, the hair, for instance, it says M43. So you think, oh, M43. Well, there's no fabric that is 43. All right. So you have, that's why you have to look at your key to see um, the three means it's the third piece. So M4 would be the color number four. And then the three is the third piece, which is crazy. <laughs> they, it's a little bit easier on the template. It's, they have it actually written differently. 
Okay, so keep that in mind. You really have to look at your template pieces. You really have to read your instructions here. And then, then you can start. Okay, so I'm going to look for H2. So I'm looking for the template for H2. Or I could just use the big piece down there. Okay, Lynn, thanks for popping in. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you need uh, applique paper. <laughs> forgot to tell you that part. So let me grab my applique paper. And I'm just going <laughs> to, yeah, I got lots of it. I'm just going to cut off a sheet <clears throat> of this. And this is why you need, one of the reasons why you need paper scissors. Okay. And um, that is heat and bond light. All right, so I have my sticky paper. <laughs> All right, I'm looking, trying to find H, H2. I got my pen. I don't see it on there. Okay, on the bottom of your template, <laughs> it tells you what colors are on each page. So that's helpful. Okay, so color 1, 2, 3, 4, and 12 are on this one. So H2 should be on here. Okay, so I found it, H2, and then I just circle it, okay? That way it's easy for me to find it again. I'm going to go ahead and put this down, too, so you can see what I'm doing. So here's H2, and I think H2 says there's two pieces. There's the big one. Oh, that's H1. Okay, H1. Huh. Oh, I see what they did there. Okay. I got it. <laughs> Okay, so on your template, you're going to have these little dashes, and then you have these straight lines, and um, when it has the dash, it actually wants you to make your fabric that big, when actually all that is going to show is the straight line, okay? So some of this fabric will be 
under other fabric or other fabric will be on top. I hope that makes sense. All right, so that's my H2. So now I take my paper here and I put it so that the sticky side is down. And this is where having a light board under here would be really helpful. But these are pretty dark. I can see it well enough. So I'm just going to trace this out and pretty much just going right on the trace line. like that and then I can iron it to my piece of fabric okay Now you could go ahead and cut this out. Cut out bigger than what your line is. Okay, like so. So cut out about a quarter of an inch thereabouts around it. See if my iron is hot. Turn it up a little bit. Now, you might want to have a bigger iron for this part. but Okay, the other nice thing about batiks is there's not really a front and a back. I mean, there is, but <laughs> it's really hard to tell. So, put your paper on your fabric. Iron that down. I might have to go get the big iron for that. This works better for little pieces. Let me try it up on high. Hi, Teresa. How you doing? <clears throat> All right. Let me go get the other iron. This is not working. Something must be wrong with it. Of course, it's always got to be something, doesn't it? I'm going to have to get me another iron. I need a small iron. <laughs> okay, let that warm up. Use a little bit of steam too. It does kind of look like paint by number. You know, you could probably do that. <laughs> I actually um, have some of those paint by numbers. Not last Christmas, but the Christmas before. Brandon bought us a bunch of those for Christmas, and they were a lot of fun. Yeah, I have a, one of those smaller, a smaller iron, but... Every time I use it, everybody tells me that it's um, been recalled. <laughs> so I'm going to quit using it on the YouTube. 
That's okay, Danielle. You can be late. Oh, I don't think it's going to be that complicated. Once you get going, you know, that's the thing. Just got to get going on it. All right, that worked better. Now, the one thing you want to do is, because of the way that I am going to do my pattern here, you want to cut out a little bit before the line, okay? Like a sixteenth or one eighth would be good, but not right on the line because um, you want your fabrics to all stick together, okay? You don't want them to be just laying right next to each other. So cut around that. So that you're going to have a little bit of extra fabric. And I hope that makes sense. I'll, I'll show you in the camera in just a second. And this is how you do it with just regular, um, your, if you're doing your own pattern, you want the piece to be a little bit bigger because you always want to overlap your fabric a little bit as you go. Okay, So this piece is going to go right there. So <clears throat> you can kind of see I can <clears throat> take a little bit off of this right here. Alright, now this is where your parchment paper comes in. Alright, so cut cut your parchment paper so that it covers the whole pattern. And I'm going to cut it right here on this line. And what I do is I tape this down over my pattern. And I use this tape so it comes up easily. Painter's tape. Yeah, once you get in the rhythm, it goes pretty fast. You know, and there, and then you got your setup time, but you have your setup time with regular piecing too. Someone else would have to do the colors. Well, that's why you have a color um, cheat sheet. So you should be able to just take that cheat sheet and go around to your fabrics, right? and pick out the same tones won't necessarily be the same fabrics but it'll be the same tones or same you know colors basically hi carolyn how you doing oh thank you very much what if it's on top i am um, are you asking me something? <laughs> Sorry. That's what I hate about the the delay is because I don't catch the question soon enough. Steamfast has a new mini cordless iron. 
You might order that. Okay. Well, that's, I think the Steam Fast is the one that I have on recall. It's been a good little iron. I've never had any problems with it, but I sure don't want it to um, catch on fire. Okay, so tape those down. Then you're, I'm going to need another piece down here. overlap. I can still see through it. Yeah, cut it off. Okay, what do I need to... Now, you don't have to use the parchment. It just... I think it's easier in the long run. Okay, I'm going to cut it right there. That's one thing I like about um, this paper having lines on it. <laughs> Makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so I'll put this one here. I'll just overlap a little bit. So. If you are doing this project, then your homework is just to keep going, keep working on it. Um, if you're in the Facebook group and you have questions, you could always ask me over there. Yep, thank you for the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. We have 136 people, 138 people. Welcome, everybody. If you are just joining me and you don't know what I'm working on, I'm doing um, a collage quilt. And it is called Summer Breeze. Okay. All right. So then here's my piece right here. Now, why did I use this? Because why did I use parchment paper? Because when I iron this down on top of the parchment paper, it will stick, okay? It will stay there. So that's why I put the parchment paper there. I don't want to burn my original pattern, and I'm not even sure really if it'll stick. Okay, so I can take that off, and then, and if I put this in the wrong place, I can lift it off and iron it again. Okay, so also I can see that there's going to be hair and stuff coming over this. I want to make sure that the parts that are in the way, or, you know, the other lines, that they're going to either be, are they going to be on top or underneath? Because that will depend that um, if they're going to be on top, then I can just go ahead and iron this down. If they're going to be underneath, then I wouldn't want to iron it all the way down. Okay, so that's my first piece. And everything on there is going to be on top. So... 
I'm just going to go ahead and iron that down. All right. So that's my first piece. Okay. So now I'm going to look for... The next one, is that the, and that'll be, oh, whoops, <laughs> all right, see, I already made a mistake, now why didn't they tell me on here okay i just realized it by okay. gosh darn it by looking at the photo the this piece that i just put down is supposed to be white all right but in the color thing color swash a1 or one is not white so they actually have two uh, ones. All right, that's that is irritating. Okay, so I'm gonna, I, but easily to fix, right? Yeah, that's that's messed up. So there you go. That's that's the kind of things that happen when when you do patterns. <laughs> so I need some white. Gosh darn it. Um, yeah, you do sew them in place afterwards. After I get all of them on there, then you can um, either do free motion quilting or you can do applique but it won't look good if you do applique on this. So I would do free motion on there. But I'll show you all that when we get to it. Let me see, I need a piece of white. Or something close to white. See if I have something that already has paper on it. Maybe that one. Boy, that that just irritates me. Okay, I would call that a pattern error. <laughs> or I guess I could have read it wrong. Um, You would think I ha would have a piece of white. Hold on, you guys. You can get a piece of white. I'm not sure if I want to use straight white or not. It'll really show up, but that's okay. I guess I'll, I can always take it off. All right. So I'm going to have to redraw that. parchment Okay. 
Here we go again. Yeah, I could have traced around the one I took off. Okay, again. Cut that out. Now, I'm not going to throw this piece away yet because I might be able to use it for something here. All right. So I'll just save it for now All right, and press that down. Okay. Let that cool off. Hold on, Valerie. Let me go back up here. Are you putting this horse together uh, on a piece of practice fabric for the long arm quilting? Um, once I get all of the pieces done on this parchment, then I will lift it off of the parchment and put it on a piece of background fabric and press it down. And um, then, yes, I will probably do it with a long arm, but I could do it with my, my brother's sewing machine. We'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do it with the regular sewing machine because not everybody out there has a, a long arm. And so it might be um, more beneficial for you guys to see it done on a long arm. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Okay, so here we go. Cut this out. We haven't gotten very far, have I, <laughs> today? That's all right. Um, we'll come back on and do some more. What time is it? Almost three o'clock. Really, once you get going on this, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. Okay. But I think, I really think it's relaxing and, um, and it goes a lot faster than you think. So if you're doing this or want to do it, the link is on the top of the chat there. It's in the blue. Um, you know, it's just uh, something enjoyable that you can work on. I think, you know, it. Uh, yeah, I think it's kind of relaxing. The hardest part, I think, that will be for anybody is picking out your fabrics. That will probably be your hardest part. Some people have a really easy time with that, and other people don't. Okay, so I got my white. You probably can hardly see that. <laughs> I'm just going to press it on there. Purple fabric underneath. Um, I'm not sure what. Fat. Oh, th this is my this purple fabric right here. This is my pressing ironing mat. Is that what you're talking about? Not the background. Hi, Denise. 
Oh, and this was a practice uh, piece that I did on the long arm. And so, you know, I just save these things because you you can find a use for it. So yeah, it's got a long arming all over it. Is that what you're talking about, Valerie? Is this? So it's just my pressing thing I use for the iron. Okay, there's that. No, I haven't finished the dog yet. <laughs> no, I just got stuck on the dog too much. So I'm going to move on to doing some of these and see if that doesn't, you know, get my juices flowing. Okay, Kelly, thanks. Hi, Shirley. How are you doing? I'm using parchment paper. Um, I cut, I covered the pattern with parchment paper and then I'm using applique paper, heat and bond light to um, cut out, draw my templates on there, cut it out, press it on my fabric and then cut my fabric out and then put it on here on the parchment paper on top of this main pattern. So if you, uh, you could rewind the video and you can see how I laid all that out. Okay, so my next piece they say is H1, which is this color I just used. And I don't see any place I can use it there. So let's see. H1. Okay, so the H1 is right here. It's a really big piece. Okay, Valerie, good. Oh, finally, we got on the on the same <laughs> wavelength there. She says, yes, Teresa, um, I remember you telling us to do practice pieces for the long arm quilting. Yep, and that's what this is. You know, and I was thinking, you know, I have some more of these big pieces. I could use them to make, like, shopping bags for, the, like, you know, your grocery store bags, stuff like that. I mean, you don't have to throw them away. You can even, this is big enough, I could use it for like a dog bed even, or a dog mat. Or you could put binding around it and um, have it as a car quilt. <laughs> you know, probably wouldn't be, you know, that pretty, right? But you don't need your car quilt to be really pretty. Okay, yeah, so the next piece I do, because I'm cutting these pieces out, now this is the one thing it doesn't tell you to do that in the pattern. So my technique is a little bit different. It doesn't even tell you to use parchment paper, okay? And that's my technique that I like to use, it's parchment paper. And then I cut the piece out um, one sixteenth or one eighth of an inch bigger than the line. So I just cut around the line, but not on the line, you know, uh, a sixteenth of an inch away from the line at least. So then my next piece is going to overlap and lay on top of that. And so it ha gives it something to stick to. And that's what you want. Otherwise, these are just going, the way they have you do it, they just uh, butt up to each other. They don't really uh, lay over each other enough. 
and then you end up having it coming apart on you um, before you get a chance to sew it. So that's why I like to have a it, you know, over it at least a sixteenth of an inch all the way around it. Okay, so one more piece. Let's find number one fabric, or I need this first. Okay, so here's H, pretty big piece. That tape has lost its sticky. <laughs> Keeps pulling up. All right. Oh, yeah, bingo. Yep, I want to go play bingo. Thank you, Nancy. All right, so you guys keep going on this. Um, I'll try and come back during the weekday before next Sunday and um, work on this a little bit more. And if you could have questions, like I'm thinking maybe um, Tuesday around noon or one o'clock thereabouts. And um, if nobody else is live, I'm not sure. Uh, And we can do some more. So I'll just leave all this out. Yeah, because I wanted to go play bingo at 3 o'clock. <laughs> and they're already setting up down there. So thank you for reminding me, Nancy. I appreciate that. Okay, so anybody else want to do Summer Breeze by um, Tony Whitney? The link is in the chat right now. Takes you over to Amazon, and this is what I'm working on. And so I'll be working on this all week. So I'll probably be back a couple of times throughout the week. Okay. Hi, Fallon. How's it going? Hi, Jean. Bye, Jean. <laughs> Didn't see you there, honey. Okay, so you guys have a good rest of your Sunday. Um, remember Tiffany's Quilting Life comes on at um, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, yeah, that does extend into the borders. Those will probably be the last piece I put on, Brenda. So that's going to make it a little difficult. You have to save those pieces for last. Um, Irish lady, I started, I'm just starting with piece number one, but I did find a kind of a mistake. So if you're doing this, um, this first piece right in the middle is actually white. And they don't tell you that. They don't give you white on your slip. Okay? So you are going to need a piece of white and for the middle. And they also want you to use white for the background. But I'm not using white on my background. So. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I'll be here, um, okay, on Tuesday, okay, you guys? We'll work on this some more on Tuesday. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I love having all you guys come visit with me on Sunday. I have a great time, and I hope you did too. Be sure if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me in the comments down below. And... Um, Oh, somebody asked me what kind of long arm I had. It's a Cunique 15. It's by Grace. And um, so there you are. All right. Have a wonderful day, you guys. Love you all. Till next time, go make something. <laughs>